Okay, what we're going to be looking at is the inside of a really, really cheap keyboard. I actually bought this keyboard brand new for about a pound fifty. Inside these keyboards, they don't tend to have actually much at all. A few resistors, a capacitor, and maybe a memory chip to play back the song. So we're going to have a quick look inside and show you how to circuit bend it. Okay, this is the inside of the keyboard we have here. Basically, speaker here. Um, you've got a capacitor here. You charge up and release the sound and you have two resistors over here now the resistor here on the right actually controls the pitch I know this already because I've done this in millions of keyboards and what we're going to do is bypass that resistor by taking the current from this side of the resistor and putting it on this side at the moment you have standard pitches in this keyboard if I just play you a note fairly normal. What we're going to do is we're going to bypass that now and um, make the pitch jump up quite high indeed. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've attached the crocodile clip to the resistor but on the other side of it and now we're going to bypass it by connecting it to the other point here. So now we should get really ridiculously high pitch noises. Excellent. Now the opposite is true. If we replace that resistor with a more powerful resistor, I've got actually got a, a 10M resistor to put in its place, we're going to be able to slow it down. What I've done here is connect one end of the resistor to a crocodile clip, which leads off down here to a potentiometer. Then another cro crocodile clip goes back to the other end of where the resistor was, completing the circuit. Now I'm going to play a song and show you actually what a potentiometer will do. Now what the potentiometer is doing is basically adding more resistance to the current. The higher you have it up, the slower the song is played and the lower the pitch. If you, t if you turn off the resistance, it plays it at normal speed. So letting all the count through, letting it through very slowly. Next up we have another example of what you can do with, by changing a resistor. I'm going to turn this on. Let's play. You are right. Excellent. Fantastic. You are right. Now, instead of kind of notes, this is, produces obviously samples of this woman talking. Let's play. Fantastic. So, what we're going to do is take this one apart, find the resistor, muck about with it. Okay, here we have the inside of the actual machine. We didn't have to take it much apart to get to it. I've located the resistors responsible for the pitch. It's these two right here. So if we just press on one of these, if you get a sound, there we go. Uh -oh. So if we actually bypass again one of these to that side, it should speed up the pitch. So let's try it. See here, I have bypassed that resistor and you can see it, um, well you can hear, it sounds like a chipmunk now. <laughs> So, there we go. Bypassing a simple resistor, you can speed up the flow of electricity and therefore change the pitch to a higher pitch. Again, the same is true. If we add that potentiometer again, we'll be able to slow it down. I must admit, um, to find two resistors kind of twizzled together um, in a little keyboard is quite amusing, but quite commonplace on some of the cheaper ones that you get. So what I'm actually going to do is going to cut these two apart right here. There we go. Now they're now they're separated, and we're going to feed in an extra resistor to make the pitch slow down. So again, just to recap, originally these two resistors were stuck together, and it kept the pitch at a relatively recognisable human voice pitch. But by separating them and adding this potentiometer in the middle of it, we've turned it into a monster.